Hi, good evening. Uh, this is your friend Han here, and it is great to see you here tonight. And tonight I have a breaking news. Uh, if you have not know uh, about it, and this is gonna affect a lot of people. Uh, and it's that the Google external keyword tool is eventually gonna be fading away. They are no longer updating um, some of the data on there. So some of your keywords researching software might become obsolete. Uh, the, the the ones you pay a lot of money for, or the ones that you're currently using now might not working anymore. So here again, uh, Google is trying to like, uh, I guess in a way, school us again, right? Uh, but uh, I have found a great solution for you. And please let me introduce that to you. And the name of the product is called Apex SEO. Okay. So obviously, uh, this is a breaking uh, news for all of us that the, the keyword to the free keyword keyword is eventually going away. So Dylan and his team has figured out a way to still getting the keywords and, and the information, the competition analysis we still need um, by coming up with a solution like this. So uh, let's kind of uh, listen to this interview, learn more about this product and how it's going to really benefit you. And most importantly, uh, to know how is this new change going to really affect you, your business, and your niche research, your keyword research, uh, your competition analysis, all that great stuff. And, uh, you know, so you'll you be a well positioned for the change that's coming on. All right. Again, this is your friend Han. Until next time, keep smiling. Uh, may peace and love always be with you. And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is your friend Han again. And it is great to uh, see you guys here. And uh, it is great to have Dylan back with us here again and to, to talk about a, a breaking news, actually, uh, to me at least, is that. The Google external keyword tool is going away. It's fading away. At least Google is no longer going to be updating. So this is going to affect a lot of people, a lot of affiliate marketers, and a lot of uh, uh, you know SEO people as well. Uh, your old tools that's currently working right now might not working anymore. And but Dylan is going to at the end of this interview, to the end of this interview, is going to introduce a unique solution. He and his partner. Uh, and, and come up with that's gonna help you with uh, this huge huge problem here so uh, before we get into this excitement here let's learn how Dylan got started with internet marketing uh, and but most importantly what did he exactly do to uh, achieve a level of success he has today uh, for those who uh, doesn't know who he is yet so uh, uh, Dylan could you kind of take over the mic give us uh, your unique internet marketing story again yeah of course um... Well, first of all, my name is Dylan Kingsbury. Uh, I've been working online at full time and hobby online for uh, 12 years now. Since 2001, I was uh, I was 17 when I started. Oh wow! But, yeah, but uh, I, I didn't get full time until about uh, mid 2012. Um, my my internet marketing store story is is different because a lot of people when they start you know they'll they'll work for a year they'll work for two years and they'll experience some success and that'll grow with me i worked for about nine years without any success at all oh, wow. and then and then it all just it all just came when i uh, you know i tweaked a few things and i i started to focus on what i was doing but um yeah, i've been working online since i was 17 uh i you know, there was there were some websites and some minuscule amounts of money made uh, in those nine years. Uh, one event that kind of shaped the direction uh, of my my career, I guess, was I, I started a website. Now, this was just uh, and and the majority of your users may not even know what this is, but it was called an MMORPG. So it was uh, a web-based game, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I just I, I read yeah so I read a story on on Yahoo News and it mentioned this game where the creators were earning forty thousand dollars a month and all they did was create you know a text-based game so you know I, I said you know I can do that so I went out and I taught myself how to how to code HTML and how to code PHP and JavaScript and things like that and I created a game it took me four months eight hour days uh, six days a week uh, four months to write it when I launched it I, I hit two million hits in the first month oh. but 
I, I didn't know any... See, this is, this is the horrible part. I didn't know anything about servers or hosting or any of that stuff, any of my background information that I should have had. So I was running this on a, ho a host called Routehost, R-O-U-T host.com. They're really good. Uh, but it was a shared hosting plan. I think I had uh, 10 gigabytes of transfer back then. <laughs> so I got 2 million hits, which obviously, you know, expired my transfer and, and everything. And it shut their whole network down, right? It was way too much for them to handle on any shared hosting servers. Huh. So it melted everything, and they basically gave me an ultimatum. They said, you know, rent uh, a dedicated host, or we have to shut you down. Mm -hmm. I was a, pe a pizza boy at the time. Uh -huh. I was making like $100 a week, so I couldn't do anything. I had to shut it down. Um, but that gave me that first taste of success. You know what I mean? That that was the first thing that I had done in like nine years. That... Did you ever, just out of curiosity, did you ever try to use any way to monetize that traffic? Like, yeah, I put uh, I put ads. You know when you can like click and, and download smileys and things like right, that. Right. Click click soar or uh, yieldmanager.com. Uh -huh. I put those up, and I was actually I would either monetize by ads or I would let people um, do a, a three dollar PayPal subscription per month to have no ads at all, which mm -hmm. would speed up the site and things like that. And uh, I I don't remember the amount of money. They didn't even actually end up sending me a check because I didn't pass. Uh, and their a, very first minimum, right? Right. right. Uh, well, it, it was a good amount of money, but because it wasn't a continuous uh, feed of traffic, it went for like three weeks and then shut down. I, I couldn't get anything back. You know what I mean? So. Right, right, right. Hmm. Wow, wow. <laughs> That's an interesting story. Yeah, that was that was my first little taste of online success. So. Yeah. So what what made you? I mean, night night. Did you say night six six years or nine years? That. That you haven't had I've to... been online for 12 years. I, I worked for nine years without making a dollar. So what <laughs> what made you keep going? I mean, people, you know, people are, uh, uh, you know, probably try first thing you didn't work out, just trying to say, hey, this internal marketing doesn't work. And 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 for that long, what you must be something kept you motivated. What was that one thing? Uh, I think it was more an entrepreneurial mindset than anything. Okay. I've always, I've had jobs since I was five right uh -huh. and, and and this isn't very nice but I'll, I'll tell you what my first job was the first way I made money um, I was five years old and I would I would go around my neighborhood uh, it was just like a tight-knit community mm -hmm. and there was there wasn't a lot of traffic so people would like let their animals out and you know their animals would just run around so everybody would have outdoor cats mm -hmm. right so I would I would find these cats just walking around, and I've always loved animals, so they'd come right up to me. And I'd pick them up, and I'd carry them, and I'd go door to door uh, asking if it was their cat. And if it was their cat, I'd ask for a reward for bringing it back, <laughs> right? So I, I would literally do this, you know, as well, as much as I could with as many cats as I could find. And I'd get five or six dollar rewards, but it wasn't a lot, but it was a way for me to make money when I was five years old, right? Huh? So anyway, that was, that was my first little job. That's awesome. So are they, you, are they calling you, you call the cat boy or what? Mm. They'd be like, hey, hey, yeah, they, boy knocking the door. They had sub nicknames for me, I'm sure, but uh, <laughs> they, they never shared them with me. So, <laughs> but yeah, that was my first job. So that's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. So let let's talk about this uh, 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 kind of groundbreaking news. As some of you might already know, some of you probably haven't heard it before. Uh, let's talk about the uh, what, what is going on with this Google external keyword thing here. <clears throat> okay, well, basically, Google is, is rolling out uh, a new keyword planner. Uh, it's available in some regions. Obviously, it's like a geographical rollout, so uh, there's certain phases. I, I don't have access to it yet, but uh, I know a lot of people do. But what they're doing is they're rolling out a new keyword tool, and they're shutting down the Google keyword tool that they have right now. Sorry, they're rolling out a Google keyword planner. Um, they're shutting down the Google keyword tool. So it's, it's causing a lot of distress with people because they're not sure, first of all, if the new tool is going to be as functional as the old one is. Uh, you know, there's a, a massive learning curve to it potentially. And a lot of people are thinking that because the keyword tool is ultimately for AdWords, that they're going to be so focused on the AdWords uh, perspective that they're not going to, you know, really support 
uh, any other sort of research. You know what I mean? So if you're doing like micro niche research or LSI research or anything like that, then that may not be a function that's built into this. It's just for people that are uh, really running AdWords campaigns. Okay, so so in, uh, how would this, in, in what scale or, or what level, um, how would this actually affect people, uh, especially to the people that uh, owns, um, I don't think we should name the software, but a, a lot of popular keyword software out there, how is this going to affect them? <clears throat> that, that really depends. It depends on how the softwares are built. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if they're built and they're fully reliant on a Google keyword API, then that software may, I'm not going to say it's going to become obsolete. It really depends on the developers of the software. But I would imagine they're going to, going to adapt to a new API, but functionality, uh, results that they're getting may change drastically. Um, so, you know, it's it's not necessarily going to support everything that it supports currently, right? So all these bells and whistles that people get with their with their $100 software, or $300 softwares may not be available. It really depends how they're built and what APIs they rely on, right? Right. So, uh, so I think in a nutshell is the 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 um, most popular keyword tool out there that's currently pulling data from the uh, external keyword API uh, how, or however the method they're using uh, to get to, to kind of uh, well I don't know if scraping is the, the the word for it but to get the keywords into the database and show the results uh, my, my not my not showing uh, correct data after a while because Google is, is going to stop updating that particular database right and is it 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 really depends how both sides um, approach it, right? If, okay. if Google stopped supporting an API, then some people are going to lose information. Okay. If that that software is fully reliant on a Google Keyword Tool API, then they're going to lose information, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it it depends on if Google is going to support an API, and it depends on if they're reliant on that API. So it, it's got to be a good marriage between the software and the API and Google for everything to work. Um, but again, that all depends how they're built, if they rely on a Google API, if you have to put in an API key and things like that when you open the software. Um, me personally, I'm not sure if any of the bigger named softwares are reliant on the Google API, but mm-hmm. you know, to have a software that size, I don't see how you couldn't be reliant on some sort of API, whether it's that or, or SEMMOS or, or anything like that. So, Right, right. So, um, so what, e- what is the... Um, talk about some of the. Uh, I guess you and your partner has figured out a a, a way. Uh, this is definitely gonna obviously affect a huge amount of people that that you know, especially doing SEOs and uh, competition researches uh, and being an affiliate marketer. So and and I think you and your partner has uh, come up with a very very unique solutions here. Uh, can you kind of talk about a little bit about that? Well, what we have it's called Apex SEO. Okay. And basically, we're, we wanted to create a, t- a keyword tool that wasn't reliant on, on, well, it's reliant on one small API for a certain feature, but other than that, we're not reliant on APIs at all, okay. right? So essentially what we've done is, is we want to give people access to keywords that well-ranking websites are actually targeting, okay? So what we've done is the actual process of the keyword research um, is, you know, you'll type in a keyword, whatever you choose, like we were just talking about Rockstar uh, energy drinks. But if I wanted to type in Rockstar energy drink, essentially what the what the tool is going to do is it's going to Google that term. It's going to find the 10 uh, highest ranking websites. It's going to parse or, or collate all the content from those websites and then compare all the keywords against each other to see what keywords show up most often, right? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, it does. And then by doing that, you can see what keywords are showing up most often in the top ten results, and those are the keywords that people are going to be targeting. Now you have like, uh, you know, keyword blacklist and domain blacklist, so you can really kind of mold it to what you need it to be, uh, which is a really good way to focus it on on a niche because. This is obviously a WordPress plugin, right? Right. So if you're running, let's say, a website about plumbing, then you install it on your plumbing website and you can um, you can mold it to that niche. You can mold it to the plumbing niche by having certain domains 
banned and having certain words banned. And then if you have another website that's accounting, then you can, you know, ban uh, accounting domains that may not be pulling all that much information, right? So if we if we were to do, let's say like a golfing website, right? Mm -hmm. Then then we wouldn't want it pulling from Amazon.com, right? Because that's not going to have a whole lot of content on it. We wouldn't want it pulling from GolfTown.com or PGA.com or anything like that because there's not going to be any actual information, right? Mm -hmm. They're either uh, commerce websites or they are, you know, big brand websites like PGA.com. So by using this domain blacklist feature, we're able to, to pull from the exact websites that we want, the content-based websites, and get all the keywords that we need. So let's talk about um, why did you uh, choose to, to, to create a plugin instead of a, a typical desktop software? Well, it, it was mainly that because you can you can uh, sorry go ahead is it because uh, you think it's uh, more convenient so you, you don't you know you, people doesn't have that limited to you know Mac or PC or um, I, I don't know maybe maybe you can explain more but I was just kind of thinking out loud here yeah no of course it's for one I've always dealt with WordPress plugins so I'm comfortable okay. with WordPress plugins uh, you know, from from all of our interviews and things like that, and all of our our conversations, it's always about plugins. Okay. And and two, I like giving people the ability to put it on different websites and have it uh, molded to different niches or or to different domains or whatever they want it to be. Right? The plugin itself, when you get it, isn't going to be necessarily set up for any particular niches. Okay. Right? So it, it's going to take you know 15, 20 minutes of actual. Um, work and inputting domains and things like that through a couple of searches to have it properly put out optimal results. So by doing that, it's basically like having a desktop software that you have different profiles for. You know, if I have an affiliate marketing profile or a YouTube uh, marketing profile or anything like that, that's essentially what we're giving you because you can install it on different websites, right? Mm -hmm. and so like the basic license is unlimited website and install it on as many personal websites as you want. So. Cool. We're going to get to different licenses um, a little bit later here, but I want to ask you what type of uh, uh, results are people going to be uh, getting? Like, are you going to, uh, like, for example, return, you know, H1, H2 tags, or are you going to have some social signal uh, when you do uh, and return? Um, and uh, what else, what, what kind of information can, can the user Use as a doing a, as they doing the competition analysis to, to rank in certain keywords. Okay, well, basically, when I'll run you through the entire process from beginning to end quickly. Okay. If if I were to search for a keyword, um, I'm in West Palm Beach, Florida, right now. I'm on vacation, so let's say I want West Palm Beach, Florida accountants, right? I like using accountants as a, an example. I don't know why, uh, but let's say I, I run that keyword, I find. Uh, you know a particular accountant's name or I find you know tax lawyer or something similar and I want more detail on, on, on West Palm Beach tax lawyer so I can I can go one of two routes with that I can either use a more information search or I can see how like in a nutshell how targeted those websites are to that term so um, it'll tell me how many times H1, H2, H3, uh, italics, bold, everything appears in the top 10, or I can do a competition analysis where I can see individually a breakdown per website for uh, all the ranking factors, H1, H2, H3, page load times, uh, page rank, domain age, everything like that, and then, you know, social signals, Facebook uh, likes, tweets, uh, and then it's going to give me, uh, we have trending graphs and things like that underneath where it shows, you know, the geographic location what is most popular, right? So, mm -hmm. I did a, I did a search for Sony Xperia Z the other day, which is a new phone uh, or tablet that came out, one of the two, and you know it, it had a, a popularity ranking of three in the United States, but I think it was like 78 in India. So we're going to be giving them that data as well, and then obviously related keywords to that keyword below uh, the competition analysis. So pretty much everything you need to figure out if you want to attack a keyword inside a niche. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. <clears throat>
Okay, sorry, I was looking at the uh, um, uh, some of this awesome feature you have here. Um, awesome. So let's let's talk about uh, the offer itself. Let's kind of dig uh, down into this a uh, little bit more detail here. Uh, let's okay. talk about the the name of the product, uh, which you already mentioned, and the uh, uh, the time of the launch and uh, <clears throat> What exactly are they get in the front end offer? And if you do have a different license, let's talk about what is it uh, each different license in, entails of what we're exactly they're getting for each license. <clears throat> okay, well, it's again, it's called Apex SEO. Um, it's launching Saturday, August 10th at 11 a.m. Um, the, the license on the front end is basically an unlimited personal license, so you can install it on your own websites and as many of those as you choose. Okay. Uh, the and it's starting at twenty seven dollars. Okay. Now, the OTO is more for people that want to make money with the the product. So if you want to sell your websites, if you want to run competition analysis or keyword research campaigns for clients, uh, then you can do that with the OTO. Um, that adds a feature or two, and you know eventually we'll be building more features into it when we get some good feedback from the users. But uh, you know we have reports built into that, into the developer's license, so you can run your competition analysis and all your keyword research, and then send reports to uh, your clients, so they they can be branded with your logo and things like that. Oh, great, great. And oh. that that'll be the OTO. What um, format? What format does it? Is it PDF or is it HTML when they export? It, it's it'll be uh, an actual page on your website, so it can Excellent. be branded to your domain. And it can be branded with your personal logo as well. Oh, so sweet, sweet. That's. I think a lot of offliners would love to have that. Yeah, we we wanted to widen it to as many niches as we could because you know obviously you're typically with plugins you're limited niche to niche, but you know with with the functionality that we've built into it and the features and things like that, we've broadened it to as many niches as we could. So. Oh, cool, cool. We'll take a drink again at the same time. Yeah, the cold act movement. <clears throat> there you go. All right, there you go. <laughs> and and uh, so, th is this the only OTO you have, or do you have? Um... There's, sorry, there's a two OTO as well. Okay. It's, it's more for people that want to have things done for them. Uh, it's a site creation um, slash monetization OTO. Okay. Um, and it's a bit of a higher price point right now. It's sitting at two ninety nine, mm -hmm. but. The results that people have gotten from these websites, mm -hmm. um, you know, some people are making fifteen hundred dollars on these mini niche sites and things like that. So it's definitely worth it if that's the route you choose to take. Okay. Um, but you know, it's not going to be for everybody. So. Okay. So it's all done for you solution, sort of. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and uh, so, what makes this? Uh, software different than any other uh, keyword research software out there either being a desktop software or you know plug-in format and why should people get this well as far as the software goes there's as far as I know and I've done a, a you know a decent amount of research on this there's no other keyword tool built into a WordPress plugin like this right there's nothing that has the functionality that we've built into this in a WordPress tool now there are other softwares that do things like this but you know, I don't. I don't want to say the only thing is the price because you know we're selling this at twenty-seven dollars when the typical uh, keyword software is selling between one hundred and forty-seven and two hundred and forty-seven dollars. But um, the the nicest feature about it is, first of all, that you're getting unlimited licenses uh, for your websites, and second, that you, like I said, you can mold this to whatever niche that you're in, right? Your your entire plugin installation is going to be completely different, website to website, based on the niche that you're you're targeting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the ability to customize it to do what you want, or or to get the proper or the optimal results based on your niche is you know is the probably the most appealing factor. Okay, and also uh, the Google thing. I mean, I, I think this is the uh, only keyword tool that I know right now. It's kind of preparing for that happen right now, um, uh, you, you know, the for external keyword kind of, um, you know, stop updating, which is a big, big thing here. So um, um, this thing is not 100% rely on that, and uh, I'm gonna probably be the, I don't know, I wouldn't say the only two when that happens. Probably be one of the 
two that actually works give you actual data when that happens. So um, that, that I think that to me that's like a big thing here. <clears throat> yeah, we're we're not. There's not a single part of this tool that's reliant on any Google keyword APIs. Uh, we are reliant on a single Google API, but that has nothing to do with the, the Google Keyword Tool. So, um, you know, if your if your your users or your subscribers were to purchase this on Saturday, and bless you, sorry, and that API was shut down on Sunday, it would not affect our our usage at all. There would be no uh, no downtime, no anything. So yeah, and I, I, I like I like the uh, I mean for those who want to get OTR, I like the feature where you can put your logos and, and set up a page and just email your client to that page say, hey, uh, this are the uh, keywords uh, analysis for you. And that, that's awesome, awesome feature too as well. Yeah, exactly. I really, really like that. So um, Dylan, I think I have all the questions that I need to ask you today. Do you have any final words uh, before we leave here today? I don't think so, but anybody that does pick up this tool, we you know, we can only do so much ourselves as far as functionality and, and new ideas for functionality. There's always, um, everybody that uses tools like this, they always have ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so with with everybody that picks up the OTO, those are, you know, the people that we consider to be the serious users of tools like this because they're wanting the reporting and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be running a webinar for them where they can get a hold of us uh, individually and tell us what features they'd like um, and we're going to create like this massive list of features and then we're going to go through and pick, you know, which ones we can build, which ones we want to put into it. Um, and it's it's a really good way to get their feedback actually heard, right? So uh, I, just for everybody that does pick up the OTO, keep that in mind that that webinar uh, is going to be essentially uh, solely reliant on, on feedback from you guys so that we can build the proper tool that you guys are looking for. So. So I, I assume those people automatically get a free updates when that happens. If you oh yeah, of course. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So um, um, yeah, and for those who are still with us right now, make sure you stay tuned. Watch the demo video right after, so you get some idea how this thing works. And uh, but most importantly, you know, get yourself protected from uh, what what what's going to happen. It's it's going to happen just a matter of time. Uh, so you still have a, a reliable keyword research tool, which is very essential to your business. And and, uh, and you know, so by watching the demo video, you know exactly how it works and how it's really going to benefit you. And Dylan, thank you so much uh, to stop by again and uh, spend your time with us. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, checking out uh, this awesome plugin myself. And I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon. Yeah, man. Thanks again. It's always a good time. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. I'm going to take a minute or two here and just run you through the functionality that we have in this plugin so far right now and uh, hopefully enjoy it. So basically what Apex SEO is, is it is a uh, LSI keyword scraper. Now, not in the typical sense because we are doing LSI a little differently. What we're actually doing when we scrape for LSI keywords, and if you don't know what LSI is, it's latent sem semantic indexing. So essentially it's related keywords. Okay, so uh, what we're doing to find our LSI keywords is we're scraping the top 10 results in Google. We are parsing all of the content that we pull from those websites, and then we're comparing all of that content to itself to find what keywords are repeating themselves the most in the top 10 pages. Okay, and then we're outputting those those keywords for you. Now. If I, I'm not going to do a new sniper search here because it's just it'll take a few seconds, so I can just show you what another one is. But if I wanted to do a sniper search, I would just type in my keyword here. I could choose my options to kind of customize the output that I want and then click Save Changes. When I do that, it's going to run that search. Now it'll take about 10, maybe 15 seconds, but then it's going to post that search in here. Okay. Now, when it gets posted in here, I can click and I can look at all the keywords that have been... Uh, output for that. All right. Now, these keywords are going to depend on a few things. First of all, they're going to depend on your keyword blacklist that you have, because we have a keyword blacklist set up in the settings for you, as well as the domain blacklist. So there's a few things that you're going to have to tweak depending on your niche in order to get optimal results. And there's training and everything on that in the members area. Now, we have this organized in such a way that 
one word keywords, two word keywords, three word keywords were, are, are ordered uh, as such. And we can simply um, go through and pick out the keywords that we, uh, that we find would be the most effective for us or, or just keywords that we're interested in. So I searched for Samsung Galaxy S4. You can see that right here. Now, if I wanted to go down, I could pick out, uh, let's see, I can find Sony Xperia Z, so that's obviously a related keyword, but that's only been found five times in the top 10 pages, okay? Uh, Galaxy S4 Review. Now, some of these, if you're within this niche, these are going to make a lot more sense to you. If you're, if you're not in this niche, then they may not. Uh, Josh Miller may be a very popular cell phone reviewer or something uh, similar to that. So it really depends on the niche, okay? You're going to know your niche better than anybody, hopefully. Uh, so this is going to be a lot more uh, effective for you. Now, when we do get all these keywords, if we just want to pick through, so Samsung Galaxy S4 review, let's say, we could click more info, research broad, or research exact. Now, more info is going to give us a result like this. So this is a more info Samsung Galaxy S4 result. And this is just going to show us the keywords. Tell us how many times it's found in the top 10 results or however many results we scanned. Uh, how many times those keywords are found in the title, description, H1, H2, H3, bold, italics. And then we're going to have the, the option to research broad and exact on those. Now, if I go over to the research, I can select a record. All right. So I can say Samsung Galaxy S4 review. And then that's going to give us our competition analysis. All right. So nice and quick. Uh, and you can see everything you really need here. You can see all the links, uh, H1, H2, H3, keyword in the title, how many likes each page has, how many tweets, the page load speed. So really all the SEO factors that you're going to need to take into account when you are wanting to rank for a keyword. Now, if we scroll down, we can see some neat little graphs. So this is the interest over time. So basically how interested people are in this keyword currently uh, and what the trend has been. And then we can see the regional interest, so we can see where we should be targeting. Okay, so you can see 25 in the United States, but 87 in India. Okay, uh, and then we can see more related keywords. So Samsung S4 Mini, uh, Samsung, or sorry, Galaxy S3 Review, iPhone 5 Review, etc., etc. So that, in a nutshell, is the plugin. Okay, it is uh, solely an SEO research tool, uh, and it's fantastic at what it does. We do have some additional features for a developer's license because there is an OTO on this. Um, and that is uh, additional branding, uh, the ability to create reports for um, your clients if you want to offer uh, any services or if you want to flip websites with this installed, then you're able to do that. But that, again, is the, key, or is the plugin in a nutshell.